To me, statistics is the tool to drag out information from our surroundings, from nature, from economic trends. I would say the science of making sense out of data. We are aiming at teaching the students a deeper understanding of how to answer scientific questions. I get to use all of my mathematical knowledge and then say something about how the world is. Statistics in Copenhagen has a trademark, which is a very, very strong combination of strong theory and mathematics and serious applications. So what we learn in the statistics program is a mixture of mathematical theory and then how to use that theory in a practical sense. The study can be challenging because we require a mathematical foundation. Everything we do in statistics is based on mathematics, based on probability theory. And therefore you need strong mathematical skills to be able to cope with the education program. Is it difficult to study statistics? Yeah, sure, sometimes it is. But I think with a solid background in mathematics, you're perfectly able to handle it. You have, for each question, half a minute. Did any of you answer? An everyday life for a student studying in the master's program in statistics would be a mixture of lectures and exercise classes. And usually the teacher in the exercise classes are older students or PhD students. For example, I'm teaching in an undergrad course at the moment. What I really like about teaching these exercise classes is that I get a lot better as a student in my own classes from teaching previous courses. We have some courses that everyone has to take, like regression and uh, graphical models, but we also have a variety of courses of which you can choose, and one can flavor the, the study in the direction of more theoretical statistics or more applied uh, data science. Yeah, minus one means that there is no intercept, and you can see the output. Yeah, I can try. I think in general at the Copenhagen University, um, there's a culture for a very informal relationship between teacher and student. We have an open door policy that you can come to the office and ask for uh, advice. There is always room for me to go up to my supervisor and be asking him a question. Even if it's not a scheduled meeting, he will, he will always take me in and we can always have a discussion about things. So we really have this informal atmosphere, which I think for uh, both for professors and for students is, is a plus. So in my master's thesis, I've been quite lucky to work with Staten Serum Institute, which is a publicly owned company here in Copenhagen that really is it's a paradise for a statistician because they have so much data. They have uh, huge freezers where there's blood samples frozen down from which data is extracted and DNA is, um, is genotyped. And so you really get to think that your work has implications, your statistical conclusions, um, they will have implications on real life uh, patients and studies. Well, statistics can be used for almost anything. One of the interesting things that I've been involved in is that I have been involved as an expert witness, for example, in various murder cases. It's fascinating to be a part of the evidence in these crime scenes. For example, some of the methods that I have been involved in developing were used in a murder case in the UK, where it was used to compute the probability that a certain person actually had been on the crime scene. I love my job. I love the research uh, because I get to work with a lot of different scientists. One of our projects is to uh, understand how the brain works. So we take measurements from monkeys where we have uh, electrodes implanted in their brain and then they are presented with a computer screen with different uh, visual stimuli. But we don't exactly understand how that visual information is processed. So one of the ideas is to build mathematical models and then we can use this data and statistical methods to judge which of the explanation models of how the brain works uh, are most probable given the data.
I'm writing my master's thesis about the development of large networks. A large network could be a social network, for example, Facebook. And I'm writing about the mathematical background for doing modeling of such a network. Is the connectivity getting larger or, or decreasing or how is it developing overall? And I'm trying to sort of build the mathematical theory to analyze that. What I really like about the Faculty of Science at the Copenhagen University is that it's a place where people not only go for their studies, but also they just hang out socially. I think coming here as a foreign student, one would find the environment here very inclusive and very friendly. We have a wide range of events that everybody is welcome to attend. And people take advantage of that. They really use these facilities. They often just stay here after their studies are done to be cooking together, to be playing cards. But it's really a place where people also feel home. And the model is just fixed. We can, of course, uh, perform inferences as we used to. The end of your master thesis is always going to be an oral defense where you prepare a presentation, usually a 30 minute slideshow, and then the examinator, which is your theoretical supervisor, uh, has the opportunity to ask questions. And um, for me, the defense really all the time was more a celebration of the final project. It's very good. <laughs> That's right, you've been here for five years, it's been taking out of a lot of your time and so really I see it as a proper way to end the studies. Graduating with a master's degree of statistics in Copenhagen is is almost certainly a guarantee for a job. Writing my master's thesis, I got extremely interested in an area within probability theory, and I would very, very much like to do a PhD in that subject afterwards. With statistics, you can work in many fields. You can go into the health sector, you can do an insurance, you can do finance, you can do many things, really. Mm -hmm.